Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Mm. Delicious. So today is Thursday, June 23rd. A lovely rain-washed morning. Uh, I woke up around five and it was pouring rain but now if you could see on video uh, the sun has come out and we're supposed to get warm today. Yesterday was cool. We never got above like um, 62 Fahrenheit. Rainy and cloudy all day which was just fine. It was delightful. A little bit froggy this morning. So um so yeah it's we're supposed to be up to 79 Fahrenheit today and my friends arrive tomorrow uh, Kelly Robson and Alex Della Monica also known as Alex Beckett uh, are going to be here for um, like two and a half weeks. Oh that's not good. Getting little dribbles on the laptop. I'm gonna have to figure out something here because there's drips coming down from the grape leaves above. I know I don't have to tell you to hold on but I'm telling you to hold on. There. (laughs) If you um, are on video you can now see the uh, the Jameson logo on my green umbrella which I now have propped somewhat um, unbeautifully over the keyboard to shield it from further drippings. I spent a little bit of time fussing with it trying to come up with a better system and then I just decided this was going to be it. So I wonder if this would work. Actually that works doesn't it? Yeah all right that works. I moved it sort of out of frame and it's still good enough to shield the keyboard. That's actually a simple and elegant solution Um, unlike many of the several that (laughs) tried. <coughs> All right so let us uh, recommence with the first cup of coffee here under the dripping grape arbor. Ah, um, so let's see what's going on. Um, getting back into the groove writing shadow wizard. Um, I got 2000 words on Tuesday but I did not yesterday um it was just a distraction day. There seemed to be a lot of um I just wasn't concentrating well. I did come back from my trip um tired I think tired from traveling. Uh, I think you know that's been one of the great realizations of the pandemic right is that traveling is exhausting. It's the the breaks right. Um, yeah being in airplanes being in airports. Um, yeah and I got my sleep schedule all disrupted on the way there because of travel shenanigans. I ended up um, not getting there. I didn't land until close to midnight eastern time at least it was only like you know, 10 my time which if you guys know me. I'm trying not to say you guys. Did I tell you that? I am um <coughs> well I'll finish that thought that uh no I lost the thought. Oh just that I got all disrupted. Yeah uh, and if you all know me you know that I am um am an early bird and early to bed at least these days. So um so yeah one of the things I've been thinking about and conversations that we've been having you know is and part of it comes out of some of the stuff that happened at nebula conference and <clears throat> whether or not older people should be excused from using language that has been determined to be offensive since their youth. B 
because one thing that people come back and say older people who are in their 70s and 80s is you know when I was younger this was a polite term and it was perfectly fine to say this and even when we try to explain that well times have changed and it is no longer a polite term and has not been considered a polite term for decades um, they tend to entrench and want to argue the point rather than change and I realize change is hard. Uh, but one thing that I was talking about with my friend while I was on this writing retreat is we were just talking about some of the recent changes in languages in language and what's considered appropriate and not and she was not aware I told her which is something that one of my friends told me that it is no longer um, appropriate to use the term master bedroom or master bathroom because it implies masters and slaves and which is you know what it came from right the master's bedroom and realtors are now saying primary bedroom and bathroom and so we were trading these things off uh, you know talking about an, another one I learned recently <clears throat> is that it's not considered appropriate to say homeless anymore that people are saying unhoused which to my ear sounds like pretty much exactly the same word but this is my initial reaction right this is you know when somebody tells me something like this I think well that's just dumb <laughs> why is it better to say unhoused instead of homeless well there are reasons right so and I do not want to be in 30 years you know creeks don't rise <laughs> maybe one day I will get to be uh, fetid on a panel and be there with starry eyed young writers who are excited to meet me and I do not want to be the older person who carelessly uses a word that is offensive to people that is harmful to people and it requires keeping up with the language it requires keeping up with the politics it's not easy but it's something that I absolutely assigned myself to do and my friend was feeling the same way it's like we have to be able to keep up with this so for me the new project is to flens you guys from my language which hurts my heart people <laughs> because I am a child of the Rocky Mountain West I grew up saying you guys as a gender neutral term it has always been gender neutral in my vocabulary <clears throat> as I used it I use it on this podcast I'm sure all the time oh a little moth is caught in the water here I'm gonna get out there's some standing water on my table here so I fished the moth out and put it over in the plant in the sun so it's little wings could dry out yes I was also that kid who fished moths out of the swimming pool and put them up on the edge to dry you and and this is an aside but I remember being so struck by Vonda McIntyre's novella dream snake and I got to be on a panel talking about Vonda McIntyre and how great her books were uh, after her death which you know was both fabulous and sucked because I didn't get to meet her and she was an amazing writer and very influential on me but I remember so vividly the line when they the people that she's trying to help that she's there to heal she comes back and they've broken the back of her little dream snake and she says um, do you people feel nothing for small things and their pain what a great line what a wonderful writer all right so anyway I was talking about something oh flensing you guys from my language so I felt very stubborn about this so far I recognize this stubborn behavior when 
people have said that you guys sounds like you are talking to men. It's like saying you men. That is not gender neutral. <clears throat> and reader I do not want to change <laughs> but I'm going to because the point is valid and I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be the person who stubbornly persists in saying you guys just because it's what I grew up saying which is the same argument that people have used for some of these other things that are now considered racial slurs that they were not racial slurs when they were younger and it's like well I accept that it was not a racial slur when you were younger. I accept that you guys was not intended to be gender specific when I was younger but now that's how we hear it and the world turns and times change that's a line from another great author Anne McCaffrey. So I'm trying to not say it anymore which means I kind of have to go with either you intending the plural. I wish we had vous like in French but we don't um or you all I'm, I'm never y'all because I'm not that much of a southerner. I have southern blood I don't have that much southern breeding you all you people you people I don't even love because it sounds a little bit like um othering right. So uh onward always Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is that I was reading I finally finished my reread of that trilogy. I've now exhausted all of that author's books. I'm going to move on with my life and I am reading a short story (coughs) by an author that I had not read before and because um she had recommended dark wizard and I was so pleased that she recommended dark wizard and I thought oh I should check out her books and my assistant happened to have I asked my assistant if she had read this gal because that's our uh, our reader check I'm like would I like her books and she said you know I haven't read them but I have her free story the reader magnet from her newsletter and I'll send that to you and I said oh okay great. So the thing is for those of you who do not know and and I am actually one of them because I don't do reader magnets um, and I apparently don't understand them very well because when somebody asked if I did a reader magnet I said which is something that you do for newsletters I said oh well um, I yes I do if people sign up for my newsletter they get a choice of one of a couple of free books depending on what genre they like and my assistant sends them and they said oh my sweet summer child that is not what a reader magnet is and I was like oh (laughs) okay. So apparently a reader magnet is something that you write specifically for the newsletter um and it is when people subscribe to your newsletter they get this but it's the only way they can get it. I think that's the um definition and if I am wrong please feel free to comment and illuminate for all of us. Do not be like the gal who commented about how we should only be drinking organic coffee. Um, Normally I do really believe in organic stuff and I'm leaving her comment up for general information but um, I feel like it mainly illustrated that she doesn't actually listen to the podcast since we don't talk about (laughs) coffee here uh, the title notwithstanding. <clears throat> so <laughs> so do explain please do if I've got it wrong but that I think this is how the reader magnet works. So the thing is is that I'm reading this gal's short story and and I think she's a good writer I can see that she's a good writer. Um, I'm not in love with the story and I think probably what I'm going to have to do is go get one of her novels because I can just tell by reading this short story that her it, it it's written like like a novelist would write a short piece. How's that? <coughs> and it made me think that um, we have to be careful because I know that 
this is a standard piece of advice to build your newsletter by having a reader magnet that you write a standalone short so that readers will subscribe to your newsletter. The thing to keep in mind is that very often people are going to read this as I am as a sample of your work right do I want to read this author and the skill set for writing a short story versus a novella versus a novel are very very different skill sets and I feel like this has gotten lost in part because um with all of the self publishing stuff there's such a relentless focus on marketing and promotion and less on craft which I know I bitch about all the time I'm sorry but you wouldn't be listening right if you uh, didn't want to hear me bitch about how kids these days don't pay attention to craft (laughs) at least hopefully so the thing is is that I feel like the chops are not there for this short story and it makes me not want to keep reading her. I think that I will give her a chance and go read one of the novels because because I think that that probably the novel writing chops are there. (laughs) Some water just poured down on the umbrella fix is working. So and and I'm not sure what to tell tell you all um, as a fix for this except if you're going to use a short story as a sample for your work make sure it's it's well done. Um, I know that there is a sense that there are short stories that are um, reader rewards you know that you write like that scene that didn't get into the book um, readers like reading the deleted scenes. And those of you who have been listening to me for a long time know that I'm very hesitant to share deleted scenes. I only rarely share them because I feel like they are deleted for a reason. And usually that reason is because they're not that good because they don't don't do what they should they they're, they're flat out just not up to the standard of the rest of it. And I know that diehard fans love seeing those little glimpses and I think that there's a place for that but I think you also have to be really careful about sharing substandard work because it does influence how people see your work. Um, I think that's different than delivering something that people have asked for. Um, one thing I actually no one has asked for it yet but I've got it sort of in my hip pocket that if you have now read all of the heirs of magic books uh, there is that bit in book four the storm princess and the raven king where Jack and Stella go off for a few days by themselves and and I have an idea of of what happens there besides lots of sex and napping because they're supposed to be recuperating uh, that there is a conversation that happens there that that's hinted at in storm princess and I've thought about that I will write that story so far nobody has said hey Jeffy I'm, I mean I know you guys have sent me other stuff and I appreciate the thoughts but I really did think people would say something like what happened with Jack and Stella while they were away maybe you guys all just figured it was sex and napping which is legit. <clears throat> But yeah I appreciated all of the uh, thoughts people sent for it's it's interesting because readers ask for very different things than I think that you will ask for. So it's always um, illuminating to hear your thoughts on I would really love more of this kind of thing. So anyway I think you have to be really aware of what your reader magnet is doing and if you see with this author if I had not had access to this free short story which I obviously got through um, underhanded means right because I did not sign up for the newsletter I got it from my assistant but because I don't like signing up for newsletters there's my my dirty little secret I kind of hate newsletters and I 
don't like getting them. I don't like email. I I want to be I want to be like CM Nacosta who does not read email. <coughs> I haven't figured out how to pull that off. Although my email has been very light lately, so maybe I'm getting there. I've been up unsubscribing to lots of things and ruthlessly blocking. So we'll see. Um, but my point, and, and I do have one, is just because you have a reader magnet doesn't mean that it is accomplishing the function that you want it to. If I had not been able to get this short story that was already free, so I didn't feel bad about getting it through underhanded means, even though I did not keep my end of the contract by signing up for the newsletter, I would have probably gotten a sample of the novel and I think that would be better on trade. And I probably still will at this point. And probably there are readers out there who are far more forgiving than I, but I would be aware of that, that it, um, yeah, requires very different approaches and some people can't write short, just like some people can't write long. So back to the same mantra, right? Discover what your process is, own it. If you want to develop new skills, new chops, then yeah, do that, but be aware that you need to do that, that it's not something that you can just churn out. It's not, and I, and I hate that phrase. I shouldn't use it, but it's writing a short story or writing a novella is not like writing a novel that takes less time. It's different skills. And maybe that's something I could talk about on here. I know that you guys ask me to talk about stuff and then I forget, but, um, I, I could talk a little bit about how those things are different and and how maybe if I could figure out to, how to explain how this reads like a gutted novel as instead of an actual short story, um, that might be helpful. So anyway, um, not today cause I've already gone long. Um, and now I'm going to go get to work. Hope you all have a wonderful Thursday under your umbrellas or not. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. You all take care. Bye-bye.